Hi, in this lesson we'll be seeing the concepts of parallel processing in eBusiness Suite. First we'll be seeing what is the definition of parallel processing and what is a worker, what is the use of the parallel processing in Oracle eBusiness Suite. Then we'll be seeing the advanced concepts which are related to different tables involved in parallel processing and how many workers we have to give in parallel processing. So first of all, what is parallel processing? So parallel processing is nothing but a e-business suite specific process which is used to run the jobs in the backend or in the background. So what I mean exactly by the jobs? In the previous lessons we have seen that when we run AD admin to generate forms, there are a lot of jobs that are created. So all these jobs basically are nothing but the tasks to let's say compile forms, reports or generate message files or even even compiling invalid objects etc. So all these tasks are basically running the background as jobs. So to manage these jobs in an organized way, Oracle eBusiness Suite requires some kind of process and this process is basically called as parallel processing. Before we understand further about the concepts, let us try to do one simple activity of AD admin to understand about it much better. So this is the environment I'm in currently and this is eBusiness Suite 12.2.10 vision instance. So what I'm doing, I have already set the run file system environment and I'll simply run AD admin command. Answer on the prompts, give the system password, apps password. Now, what I'll do is I'll select the first option that is generate form, generate application files. In that I'll select the second option, generate form files. Now it is asking for number of workers. Now, as you can see here, it is saying that maximum number of workers supported are 999. But remember the number of workers it actually shows is usually twice of the number of CPUs you have in the system. But you can always give up to two to four times of the number of CPUs. So which means the more the number of workers, the more are the jobs which you can run in the background. So I'm going to choose the default option 4. Now it has some, from, some prompts related to the forms which is okay. Now what I'll do is I'll try to generate basically forms which are related to pay. Now I'll press enter. And it is saying do you want to generate specific form object or all the objects. I'll say all of them. Now select language, enter. Now observe carefully, you can see that it is creating a table called FND install process. And also it is saying that there are 122 jobs remaining. So basically all the forms that are being compiled basically are compiled as jobs in the background. Why do we require this process? Let's say for example, you have started a session where you are doing more than 1000 jobs. If let's say your terminal has ended or your, let's say for example, your eBusiness suite is down due to any reason or your server is down. So all the information of these jobs will be lost. So what Oracle does is whenever it is able to perform any jobs, it creates a table called FND install process and it stores the information of all these jobs in the background in the table. Now let's go to backend. This is my SQL developer and run select start from FND install process. And as you can see here, there are four workers which have been already created. Now see the job that is being done by the worker one. If you observe it, it is changing the name of the form. So which means that this specific worker basically is used to run the jobs in the background. Worker is nothing but an OS process which performs the job. Now, it is saying that the table or view does not exist because once all the jobs are complete, what it will do is it will drop the table again. So remember always that the FND install process basically is a table which is created only when there are jobs that are being done. And once the jobs are complete, the table is dropped automatically. Now, so when do we actually have these jobs? 
These jobs we usually have in two cases, mostly. One is while you are applying patches using ADOP or AD patch, or we are running the jobs using AD admin. For example, I have generated forms here now. That is one of the one of the tasks I have done from AD admin, and that has created several jobs. And these jobs basically run in the background, and they are run by workers. Workers are nothing but the OS processes. And other jobs examples are compiling invalid objects or running database driver task during patching activity, etc. So all these are basically the jobs. Now, what you need to understand about the workers and jobs. So the workers concurrently run the jobs assigned by the manager. There is something called a manager which which works in the background to manage these workers. And we have seen already that AD admin generally prompt for number of workers. And we have selected four by the, which is the default. The number of workers need to be decided based on CPU and number of estimated jobs. Because let's say for example you want to generate, let's say more than one thousand forms. I have selected let's say ten fifteen products and I want to generate the forms of all these ten fifteen products, which means there are more than thousand jobs to be done. If you are selecting only two workers, that means there are only two OS processes which are created, and the time it takes to execute each of the job one by one by these only two process or four process will be very high. So what you have to do is you have to always estimate the number of jobs that are there and increase the number of workers based on the requirement. But remember that once you start the activity then you cannot change the number of workers in between. So worker process are nothing but the instances of the AD worker program. And each worker can only execute one job at a time. So let us try to do one more time the same activity. Let us try to generate more forms. So I have given actually lot of products now. In fact, four products. Let us say yes. Enter. Enter. Now it again creates the FN install process as you can see. Now there are more than one thousand three fifty three jobs now. So now what I'll do is I'll open a new terminal now and I'll run psfnef grep ad work. As you can see here, there are four workers OS process that have basically been created and these four workers basically perform all these jobs. As you can see here, it is basically each worker does one job at a time and once that is completed, the manager will assign a new job to the worker. So how does it work basically? The manager assigns the worker a unique ID and it inserts a row for each worker in FN install process. I have shown you previously the FN install process table and which basically has the details which are related to the workers. And the status of these workers basically are managed by using control underscore code and status columns. And whenever the job is complete, it will update the status or the control code and it will when it when the job is assigned, the status will again change. And most important thing is once all jobs are complete, the FN install process table is again dropped automatically. So how can you manage the parallel processing? In case any one of the job fails, then you can basically use utility called ADCTRL or AD controller to manage the parallel processing. There is one more concept called deferred jobs in parallel processing. So what exactly is deferred jobs? Whenever a particular job fails for the first time, then it is called basically a deferred job. If the same job fails for the third time or the overall runtime of the job is more than 10 minutes, then the job is considered as failed. So let's say for example, I am trying to basically generate a form. And one specific form, let's say for example, pay x y z dot fmx. So this pay x y z dot fmx is a file which I want to generate. And first time it failed. When it failed for the first time, then ad underscore default underscore jobs, a new table is created. And it will 
basically defer it one more time and it will rerun the job one more time then the second time also when it fails and when it fails for the third time this is considered as a failed job and when a job is failed that means as an apps dba you have to fix the job which means you have to fix the worker fix the underlying issue and then retry the job in order to retry the job what you have to do is you have to use a utility called adc trl so how many workers do you have to really use as i told before previously it depends purely on the activity you are doing if you are applying a major patch for example you are applying a release update patch a release update patch means for example you are applying a patch of 12 to 10 you are upgrading from let's say 12.2.5 to 12.2.10 this is called basically a release update and release update obviously has several thousands of jobs in fact it can have up to even 25000 or even 30000 jobs now if you are giving only four workers for this kind of a job this kind of an activity then it will take a lot of time to run all the jobs so based on the number of cpus you have you can give up to 2 to 4 times of your cpus for example i have got a 8 core system i have got 8 threads let's say for example then you can give even 16 or 24 jobs i mean workers and which means that at one point of time since you have 24 workers it can run up to 24 jobs at a time and also in release 12.2 the number of workers basically also might be impacted based on the load on your database so where are your log files located for the workers by default the worker log files are located in fsne directory ebs apps log ad admin log this is when you are invoking the worker log files or the base, basically the workers using ad admin in case you are using adop patching then workers are automatically created and the worker logs are also under adop logs automatically we will see the log files related to adop during the patching activity or the patching lessons so now if you can see here still the jobs are all running since there are more than 1000 jobs and we have only four workers it is taking a considerable amount of time to run all the jobs and on the background now if you see here let us try to again query the fn install process and you can see that there are four workers which are running jobs and now we can also check file name worker underscore id and you can see that all the four workers 1 2 3 4 are running different jobs and they keep changing the jobs because they are basically performing different jobs one at a time once a job is complete it will assign another job to the worker who will assign it it's basically the manager in the next lesson we'll be seeing how to use ad controller to monitor the jobs and how to manage the failed jobs using ad controller